GM. Hi everyone, uh, and welcome to my next speed run. Um, sorry about the delay with these. Let's dive straight in as we've got a game here, uh, which has started E4. I played the Sicilian, and then my opponent's gone F4. Now we're getting to the 2000 rating range, so certainly the games are going to get a lot harder. And it's a Sicilian that I'm trying to play. And you really need to know theory against most replies. F4 is a move that was very popular in England for a certain time. And I know that D5 is a good response. Stopping those pawns uh, becoming too comfortable. Now my opponent has moved on. And again, another thing you should get used to doing at this level is knowing pawn structures. I'm going to develop my knight. But I already know with this pawn structure where my pieces want to go. And I want to bring this bishop to G4. Because at some point I want to move this pawn, but I don't want to block this bishop in. So I don't want to, you know, cage it between, behind those pawns. Uh, so now I can play this move and you can see my bishop is a lot better. Even if I swap it for the knight. And I know that my other knight wants to come to f5. Come to uh, the square here. And um, another good plan is queen b6 getting on this diagonal. So I could I could even take with a pawn here. I, I'm not too worried about doubling pawns because this is a very strong formation. And I can now try c4 check, which my opponent's going to have to break this pawn down at some point. And um, I've got a very interesting idea here, actually bringing my bishop to d3 and trying to get a hold on that square. I'm looking for weakened squares. There's one there. And... I'm going to actually go for this plan. There's another very intriguing plan to try and get the knight here going h4, knight g3. But that takes a long time. And we've got to think how my opponent's going to play. And he's going to play b3, break down this pawn structure. So hang on a minute. Let's have a look. Maybe this is not so good. Um, okay, you know what? I, I, I don't know if my bishop's very good there because he can go knight to e1 and get rid of it. So I'm going to just calmly bring this knight into the game develop my pieces in a standard way when I think my opponent should play this or this okay so he's moved his queen he's unpinned his knight and now this idea becomes I think quite a lot stronger because he hasn't got knight e1 so let's now maneuver the bishop into this square the reason I want my bishop there is I want to make sure his pawn can't move then his bishop will struggle to move then his knight will struggle to move he's moved his queen here I'm not going to exchange queens because I've got a very active position this is a very active diagonal, and I don't want to do that. I'm now going to bring my other bishop in. I'm just trying to think of the best squares for my pieces. And my knight can also fit very calmly on this square, but it's also strong moves like bishop here and bishop here, winning the exchange in this position. Is that just very strong? Already I think I've got a winning, uh, ex uh, a winning position here. Uh, there is this lovely idea of trying to come in here and, and go for checkmate. Let's just check that out. Here, here, and then I play h4, h5 here. But his queen's quite active, so maybe bishop e2 is good. Rook here, bishop here. And let's just have a think. Here, here, bishop here, queen here. And then if I, for example, take here, he might be able to take that one. But then I have rook here, which is strong. And if I go... Da, 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 uh, sorry, uh, here, 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 and again, calculation is key at, at this kind of level, here, oh, sorry, um, no, I, okay, sorry, I'm getting confused, I've got to move quickly, do I just throw this in or not? Uh, I'm going to go for this one, I mean, that was just very lazy calculation, I should have been able to work out probably this was just winning, but I'm doing this lazily, why am I playing it lazily? Because I feel I should be winning with normal play and what I mean by that is look at those pieces and what I mean by normal play this is also a very attractive idea put the pawn on h4 and the knight on g3 and this is a pattern that I've managed to play multiple times before and now he's trapped his own rook but he was in a very difficult scenario well okay maybe he can play pawn here on pass on but um his position is is really really bad we'll have a quick look at what he did wrong because He's obviously quite a high-rated player, but everything went really wrong in this game. And, okay, well, he is, he is it's still game on a little bit. He's threatening to take here. I thought this was easily winning, but 
with my time scenario it's not so much so I'm gonna just try to win some material now uh, and this is really called cash I'm trying to cash in on, on on my good position all my pieces are working all of his pieces are back here at some point you want to cash in and get material gain or, or winning attack but you, you've got to time that cashing in very well. Okay, he's going here. So I'm going to just throw this in because this pawn doesn't do anything because I have ideas in knight g3. This is a very attractive move. I'm not going to do it now because my rook is on pre. But if I can, for example, castle and get my rook defending my rook, then knight g3, pawn takes, pawn takes, wins his queen with a big attack. I'm not rushing into taking that yet. I'm only going to take material when I feel it's correct because he can't move his rook. I still win there. This pawn didn't help him at all. So I'm just going to try to get my last piece in when every single one of my pieces is working fantastically well. And look at his pieces. They're so badly placed. Okay, so he's gone g4. Actually, maybe that is a good move because I can take... He takes both my rooks. Do I go for some glory there? Um... No, I think it's time to cash in. Now time to take this one. Was there something better? I don't know. I want to get my queen in um, to the position. But bishop takes. I might just have to move my knight back. He's actually, you know, it's, it's okay. I want to go in. Here takes. Okay. And uh, maybe this is not as easy as I thought. Because now his bishop comes here. Have I, have I not found a great way to win this? With my time scenario, possibly I'm completely messing this up which would be very annoying because it should have been i just totally I didn't realize i've got 25 seconds okay god what have i done with my queen i've trapped it i've trapped my queen oh my god i've really messed this up guys knight here and i've trapped my queen um just not leaving myself enough time uh oh, oh, oh god and now he could have trapped my queen i'm trying to come in here with 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 my queen so it doesn't get trapped and I'm coming in and even this is far from clear because his knight is so strong and I'm not the fastest of players as I'm sure most of you are extremely aware of uh, oh god so I'm not happy with this how did I not win this so much easier very annoyed very annoyed, but okay. I might still have a chance. Come on, Simon. Uh, all, all my tutorial ideas have gone out the window. I've got 16 seconds. And it, it, it probably doesn't matter. How did I get so short a time? <laughs> how, how did that happen, guys? I have no idea how I got so short. It looked, it looked kind of okay until it didn't. I suppose that's life, isn't it? And now I'm just trying to see if I can do this in time. But can I do it in time? What do you guys reckon? Oh shit, there's another check. We'll come there. I'm trying to get some checkmate idea around his king, but I can't see where it is. The checkmate idea. I'm winning more material. I'm winning everything. 10 seconds. I've got a pre-move. I think I'll be lucky to get a draw if I can eliminate his pieces. Oh, shit. Definitely lucky to get a draw now, the way I've played this. Very frustrating play from me. The way I've done this. <laughs> Oh, Simon, how did you throw this away? And we got a draw here. If we can do it in time, of course. Uh, I have to take the draw because I just got too short. That was really annoying. And, you know. Okay, well, I mean, that was basically... Uh, I, I just... I just... <laughs> I got so short of time, it was kind of crazy, right? And, um, well, okay, he's trying to still flag me, but, I mean, that's not going to happen. So, um, I mean, uh, yeah, so I, I didn't I didn't put the ball in the back of the, net, of, of the net there, which was very frustrating. But um, some key moments um, 
his opening was actually quite bad. I knew the right setup, and you want to get rid of this bishop. I'm always thinking in the opening, I want to give, you know, you want to, as Ra Jonathan Rouse and a grandmaster said, you want to speak your pieces, and you want to give all your pieces the best they can get, even if that means exchanging them off uh, to help your king out. They can be heroes. So this bishop wants to be outside, and this is what I continue to do. And I, I floundered around this point here when really my advantage is is exceedingly good let's just let, let's not go too deep into that um let's just move on with another one because i'm a little bit annoyed we we didn't finish that one off uh, and we actually lost some rating points so let's go back to the jabava london and um i'm gonna go with our stage one plan here of d4 knight c3 bishop f4 you've probably seen this multiple times before there we go we've got it in and now e3 is normally what comes next, so the bishop can come out, uh, and hopefully the knight. Now this system here, I'm just filming Jabava part two with Blair. We're spending a lot of time in it, and we came to the conclusion that actually this move h4, which is a new idea-ish, I say ish because it's played in some computer games, is very interesting with the idea of playing this kind of very modern approach of just piling up the board while black attempts to do the same on the queen side we're going to try to do things on the king side and it's it's more fun to attack on the on the king side than the queen side and this forces this knight to go to a bad square there we go and here uh, there's a number of ways i can play and i think when i looked at this before i came to the conclusion that maybe the bishop should be coming to h3 uh, obviously this dvd this new one will be released on G my company ginger gm there's a link below in the description uh, and you can buy this course to learn all about this opening. Um, but all, all in all, this is a, a decent move. My opponent's trying to swap off pieces. You can see this level player is making much less mistakes. And the funny thing is you can often let them exchange here. But I think for now we'll keep it very simple. we we'll take here. And after queen takes, what can we do next? Can we come here? This could be quite interesting because I see some holes and I want to try to get in. When you, you know, you've got to look for weaknesses in your opponent's position, especially as your, your, your level of play, your standard of your opponents increases. You're not going to win just by them blundering. You've got to find little weaknesses. And I think this is okay because takes, takes, check, we have C3. So the reason I'm doing this, I notice a weakness there. I notice a weakness there. And the Jabava Knight, it's a very double-edged sword, this knight in the middle game. It can be bad because it gets in the way of your c pawn. It can be in the way of things, but it can also be very good because you can often jump this way, uh, and in some cases you can jump this way. So the reason I played this move, again, is really I'm just looking for weaknesses in my opponent's position. Uh, that pawn, obviously I would like to grab that one, and this square. And I'm being aware that this check looks scary, but I always have c3 when my queen guards my knight. Um, now, it's a very weird position because I have played these pawn moves over here and I'm hoping they're gonna help me at some point get an attack. So my opponent is just developing his knight. Now I could dive in, but I'm not convinced which square is better yet. I kind of wanna go to c5 because I, I think his bishop is a bad piece, but I don't wanna allow b6. So I can hope for him to go C, b5 because then when i go here he won't be able to go b6 so often waiting is is the much better idea now the one move I, i'm figuring where you can get a little bit active could be this move that move is slightly annoying so is there anything i can do to stop that i don't think so if he does play it it gets yeah this move is actually it's a little bit frustrating so should i just come in Maybe I can move my knight to this square, but if I come here, he will play here. So this move does worry me a little bit. Bishop d3 here, takes, knight takes. Okay, it's probably okay. I think we have to develop. This square I feel is better now. It points this way if he castles. But e5, takes, takes. I'm going to go knight takes, queen takes, check. And just queen e2. Keep it very simple. And I think that's okay for me. My knight still has his potential. Okay, now he's come here. I can definitely jump in, but which square is best? B6 or here? Now, if I go here, though, it's going to take this one. Just realized. Okay, maybe we go here first. I wait one more move because now my queen 
defends my knight. Because there was a little tactic. If I jump in, maybe had knight takes d4, I take... Okay, so now my knight comes to c5. This is the position I wanted. Look at that knight. He can't kick it away. I think b5 is a positional mistake. At this level, you'll get... I mean, maybe, maybe it's not so bad because he's still got e5. But if I can, let's say get a clamp on that square that knight's very strong and at this level you get less outright blunders because the opponents are very you know decent players but it's more little positional errors and I, I just feel that this is this is wrong putting this here so i'm going to go queen e2 i want to try to stop this break and then i want to go b4 and maybe just castle or put my king over here so he's trying to break out he's trying to get counterplay here this is a wise move actually and now that it seems like there's going to be a lot of activity on this area of the board, maybe maybe I want to maybe I'm going to go this way. It looks very risky going kingside. So castles here. He has takes and a check, but knight d2 seems sound. So I'm going to castle. My king seems safest over here. And maybe I could have taken and tried to get the other knight in, but it wasn't clear what's happening after knight takes knight. So still a very double-edged position. This knight. Okay, so now he's closed it down. That seems a very uh, slow response. I'm just gonna now uh, pile up pressure on the half. Frame. That seems like a really bad positional move. He's played two pawn moves, which I just feel are not correct. And the reason they're not correct, he's allowed my knights to come in. He can't battle for my knight squares. He's, you know, pawn moves can't go backwards. You've got to be very careful making pawn moves. Pawn moves are very double edged. Let's just play this move quickly because I don't want to get in the same time scenario as I did last time and he's now got to fight against these knights forever I'm not in a rush to improve my position this helps I probably go h5 and try to create some more weaknesses over there okay he's trying to swap off that knight I thought this might occur let's take that one we're gonna have to swap off one of our good pieces but in return we've got to also you know try to cash in as I said earlier and we can see that the e6 square it is certainly a square that I can aim to, to cash in on now I don't think I'll take there because rook e8 looks tactically a bit uh, a bit bad. So again, let's just be patient. I don't need to rush this. This knight is tied down to this. I don't need to take this pawn. I don't need to worry about that. What I'm going to try to do is get a pawn here because then when my queen comes in, it threatens checkmate. Okay, so now he's defending this one. Do we come in now? I think we come in now because I want to get rid of the queen because then I have a threat against his bishop and this keeps again i've got one big weakness to work on here this one this pawn here so i can work on this weakness for a long long time and you know what the russian school of chess used to say or the soviet school it was you pile everything when you get these this is a positional game when you get you know, these these kind of positions and you get i'm going to play h6 oh shit have i fallen for this i'm falling for a lot of things now Okay, I'm going to play f4 before that knight has a chance to go there. I probably was okay there, but that was slack. Uh, what the Russian scholar said is you pile everything on one weakness, and then you try to find another weakness. And the other weakness is going to, I hope, come on the queen side. So first of all, um, he's created a bit of a weakness there himself, this one. Uh, but is he is he going to get very active with his rook coming over? Not playing well today, am I, guys? Not playing well. Because suddenly this one is actually, you know, I've allowed him counterplay yet again. Uh, and these rooks come down. What have I done there? Okay, if I can just avoid that, maybe I'll put my king here and my bishop here. I've still got all of these big uh, advantages. So I think this is all right. I can put my bishop here, my king here. Because his minor pieces are horrendous. Okay, so I'm not sure what he's trying to do with that manoeuvre. I can take here, take here, but my knight's so strong. I'm going to put my king somewhere safe. I don't like these rooks coming down towards it, so I'm going to put my king over there. I think I was still winning there, but I shouldn't have allowed him any counterplay. And you can see I'm struggling a lot more at this level than I was at the previous levels. The opponent's playing much better. Now, the more exchanges, again, I would probably think the easier... This becomes his bishop is on pre, um, but I'd love to swap rooks off now. That's not going to be easy. Can we now come back and try to get this one in? Okay, let's see if we can, because I feel that my knight and bishop will be able to break through because I've got this weakness and this weakness in the ending. 
I don't want to allow his rook to activate. I've also got this weakness in the ending. That might not look like a lot, but because his pawns are on light squares, this, this is going to be certainly an issue for him. But at the moment, I'm just again, just improving. Pressure here, pressure here. How do we... How do we improve this? Well, I might try to put a knight here, but okay, the pressure got to him and he's dropped a pawn. Probably was losing. I, I, I really feel the position. He shouldn't be able to hold it. Uh, and oh, maybe maybe I shouldn't have allowed this knight to come in again. I, I, I'm not playing as well as I would have liked here, but this pawn should be, should be good enough to convert. It looks like my king is in danger, but I don't see how... And okay, we, we, we get the win there in the end. Um, so that was quite a long positional game. And it's just a couple of errors that my opponent allowed my pieces in. But again, you know, to get to this 2000 um, ELO level on chess.com, which is hard, we'll make this the last game, you really have to get rid of the, the obvious blunders in your game. My opponent was making mistakes there, but not blunders. How do you get rid of blunders? It's just improving your tactical vision. It will happen. Um, you will get rid of them. And if you are blundering, I mean, just do tactics and maybe don't play blitz as much if you're blundering all the time. Anyway, we'll make this the last game. We'll get one more Jabava London in. This is one of the main lines. Knight b5 is actually the suggested move that we're giving in our next Jabava course, but I thought I'd play the old variation here. And, and the reason we're giving Knight b5 in in that in the new one is to stop this bishop b4 stuff which a lot of you would be happy about but generally um i think my opponent getting rid of the dark square bishop even though he doubles my pawns is not great because this bishop is very strong and this is a mistake if you're going to play like this as black you need to try c5 and, and try to attack these pawns because the problem my opponent has now i mean it's not a big mistake but these mistakes do make a big difference is that these bishops on the king side, to my eyes, look very dangerous. And I'm going to start by bringing the queen here, threatening checkmate. And um, he's now made what I probably consider another mistake. Why? Because his dart squares now look horrendously weak. So I'm just going to go in here and I've got a dart square bishop. He hasn't got a dart square bishop. He has got weaknesses on the dart square. So I think his position is horrendous. There's no obvious way to break through. I mean, bishop here, f6. What's he trying to do? We should always think about this. He wants to go knight here, so g4 looks correct. But also, just the idea of playing h4, h5, opening up my rook, might well win this one. But I'm going to start by, again, if you want to, the immediate thing I always say to get better at chess, look at your opponent's last move. What's he trying to do? Knight here and stop it. But he might also be pushing this pawn. But now it shouldn't be as effective because his queen might be needed on the king's side to defend those weaknesses. For example, if his queen comes over here, not sure it's doing a great deal. And in this position, I think it's time to try and bring in one more piece. I've got to be a little bit careful that I don't trap my queen. And he has got it. He's gone. He's gone for actually this. You know, not a bad defensive position here. If I go here, the pawn comes forwards. And got to watch out for this knight coming back. I think my queen's done its job here. There's no obvious way through. So I'm going to bring my queen back just so I don't get trapped. Okay, now I can win a pawn. I was actually thinking he's defended okay. I can't checkmate him. Let's bring my queen back and start targeting other areas. But obviously now I am just going to grab the pawn here. Why not? I'm winning a pawn. This dark square bishop is just so strong in, in, in these positions. And... I think my opponent exchanging off there. I know that is a key idea sometimes in Jabal of London, but I, I don't think it's a very good idea. This dark square bishop just too strong. Um, and I don't think I like this move because, again, it's these dark squares. He's really weakened them. And I'm just going to keep it closed there. My bishop can just move in and out of these squares at will. Let's not lose the bishop. So we'll just give a check. I don't want to go here. Don't want to allow him to exchange it. And... Now, I think we can continue harassing him on uh, the king side. Uh, I do have ideas of checkmating him still, opening the h-file. And I like checkmating. I think most of us do. So it looks like a good idea, doesn't it? So let's just go here. I was also thinking c4 makes sense. But okay, he's opened up this file. This is really risky. 
and now I need to double up rooks. So let's move the king because my other rook might come over. Okay, he, he is exchanging one pair of rooks. Does this help him? Maybe. I'm going to switch to the other side now. I want to get rid of my double pawns, make this bishop a little bit better. I could go check, but I didn't really see the point of that because he might better go king here and rook over here, exchanging off rooks. And I really want to get rid of this knight in order to make that useful because the knight defends the square. So I'm looking at this knight and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to clean off all the pawns and try to get this pawn here because this knight to me is defending the key square. Remember what I said about key squares earlier and one of the key squares I thought was here so if I can get rid of this knight by attacking it I get through to that key square so of course this one now looks right but it seems like he has blundered and um, I think we can also cash in the chips now try to activate my pieces in order to convert this and the king is an important piece so let's make that better Look where you have passed pawns, but also look at what your opponent's trying to do. Well, a4 does stop that, but my a-pawn could be a bit weak. I'm not too worried about this move. It doesn't seem to do too much. I'm going to try to use my pawns. I'm going to try to get two connected passed pawns. So let's use the passed pawns in the best way possible. And, of course, coming through the middle like this makes a lot of sense. And, of course, this is perfect timing before his knight is able to annoy me when you're playing against knights and you don't have a knight a key way to win is take away the squares for your opponent's knights with your pawns that's something you should always be looking at doing so i certainly don't want to move this pawn because it would allow his knight in but again looking at targets this one is now weakened another weakening pawn move so we come and target that one and it's pretty straightforward here if i'm going to move any pawn in the middle it's definitely this one keep these two pieces tied down moving the other one would allow both of them to come in and um, now my rook is activated and it's pretty straightforward now uh, in all honesty let's tie that knight down now even more it might want to go there so let's take away that square for the knight gives my king a way in this knight hasn't got anywhere to go and the king is an important piece we will start moving it towards the center okay his knight now wants to go here so i can move my pawn forwards now to to take away that square very happy to make exchanges because uh, my opponent is uh, so far down on material and now it doesn't really matter what pawn i move because um they're all looking fantastic and uh, i'm just ready to bring my rook to the seventh rank uh, and that will be terminal so got to find a way in i'm looking for any checks he doesn't have any checks that are good and i'm just trying to get my rook in to this rank forces king a little bit further backwards and i'm enjoying this game far too much now and my pawns are coming down and oh they're all coming down this is too much too much fun and i'm going to get the rook on the other side of these pawns because oh they're they're, they're just steamrolling steamrolling down the board and we can expect him uh, to resign uh, in in this position which he does okay so uh, i mean we have one draw and two wins there it wasn't straightforward by any means my opponents weren't blundering but it is clear to see that their standard is around this level um because of more subtle things that they're doing so for example in this game uh, in the new dvd or i should say ginger gem course i'm creating we have recommended this move, but I'm going to wait until that course is out until I start playing it. This move stops in the bishop b4 stuff. e3 is still a good move, but a lot of people were mentioning bishop b4. But in this case, I don't think this knight e4 works very well in this position because I'm defending c3 in a great way. And I can now get rid of his dark square bishop. And I already feel here that black has problems going forwards. Uh, and he made a lot of... Uh, one thing I noticed in all the games I played today was actually weakening pawn moves that my opponents are playing. They're not necessarily blundering pieces, but look, weakening pawn moves. I mean, maybe this was... Maybe f5 was better, but this one maybe not so big. But if we go a little bit deeper, what other weakening pawn moves have played? Well, 
f5. This is a really bad move because I've got a dark square bishop weakening pawn moves and in some of the other games that came up. So maybe that's something to concentrate on at this level when you stop blundering. Just be very careful what pawns you move because pawns can't go backwards. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. Over and out.